Oscar and this is Rory from RateMyFuneral.com. That was Rate, by the way. This is a quick guide to Infidia. This is kind of a new version. I had an old version, but I was really hung over in it, so I didn't really come across that well, I don't think. <laughs> and it's a little bit out of date now. So um, I thought as we're now up to version 1.4, which I'm just about to release, I thought I would do a new version of this uh, quick guide. So if you're familiar with Infidio, then you'll be used to all of this. But if you've never seen it before, don't know what it is, then this is just for you. Uh, basically, it's a lighting studio uh, with an Infinity Studio, all kind of in a one like rig. So uh, it allows you to set up scenes really, really quickly and easily. You haven't got to put in new lighting each time and that sort of thing. And all your controls are there. Um, and the kind of default settings, you know, I've put a lot of effort into making sure the lights are configured in a really nice way so that you you know, you can get a decent render without having to actually change anything. And then from that point on, it's all tweaking and down to you and how, how you do it. So um, just uh, as an example, I've got this uh, Lego Technic car here. Uh, if we just hit render, this is a completely blank uh, canvas in, uh, in, in Cinema 4D uh, with just this model in it. So if we just hit render, you kind of get that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, it's not too bad, but that's default lighting. So it looks a little bit flat and a bit nasty. So um, it might not help that it hasn't got a floor, but I think even if we add a floor, it doesn't really improve that much. So no. So uh, if we just take, say, in video, which you just load up out of your content browser and dump straight into the scene, uh, you get this kind of thing. And we just drop it so that the uh, floor is at the wheels of the car and hit render. And uh, now we've got some nice reflections. We've got some nice shadows going on. And that is it just basically out of the box. Now, there's a few tweaks that we can do just to make it a little bit better now, uh, which are literally anti-aliasing. We turn up to best. And maybe we turn on global uh, 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 yeah. ambient occlusion, if I can get my words out. Right, so let's hit render and have a look at that one. Obviously, this is going to take a little bit longer this time because uh, anti-aliasing, when you put that right up, that, uh, that's, that's basically taking out all those, not, those nasty, jaggy edges. Um, so it's putting a lot more sort of effort into uh, those. So as you can see there before, this shadow here or this shade uh, it was a very nasty line, whereas now it's nice and clean and smooth. So the car is looking, uh, you know, pretty respectable. Like I say, that's it out of the box without having to change or tweak anything. So now that we have done that, let me show you a few uh, of the controls and that sort of thing. I'll just wait for this one to finish off. I'll tell you what as well, let's change it. Uh, so the anti-aliasing is on geometry just for while we're rendering out and doing tests. So if I zoom out, you can see what's actually going on here. You've got the floor and you've got three lights. So you've got hair light, a key light and a fill light. So the floor, you can control, uh, uh, there's, there's all these controls and settings and everything over uh, when you select it. Um, so the floor, you've got the scale. You can change the size of that. Uh, you can change the size of the studio. So perhaps you want it to maybe a bit darker. Uh, you can just change it and it gradients as well. So uh, you get that nice kind of uh, built-in gradient without having to add it in post or anything. So that's quite handy. Um, and you can also change that if you want it to be a diagonal gradient or a vertical. Uh, you can turn off the floor completely if you just want your item floating in the ether. Uh, and also here, this is really nice, is uh, reflection. So we can just put a bit of reflection on the floor and then blur that reflection to kind of however much we want. So that's obviously a really, really subtle amount. So it's just enough just to give it that, that slightly cooler look. But if we just turn that up a little bit, you'll see it a little bit better. There we go. So we've now got a nice, really reflective, shiny floor. Um, what is next? So uh, after reflection, we have this edge mode. Edge mode is a, uh, basically it cuts half the floor out, it kind of folds it down. So this is quite handy if you want maybe half the studio floor, half the floor, uh, sorry, half the floor and half nothing. So you can get some interesting shots and angles and stuff. Um, and also we have wall mode. So we can turn on a, a wall in the background. I'm just gonna make the, the, the studio white for now, just so that we can see what we're doing a little bit easier. So maybe something like that, there we go. So we've now got this kind of shape going on. Um, and with the wall, we can push it back and move it forwards. We can rotate the whole thing, sort of depending on where we want it. Um, we can also enable a curve so that we've got a kind of sweeping background if we wanted it. Um, let's see what else. 
can we do with this? Uh, physics, yes. So each part of these has their its own physics settings and it's all done by default, uh, along with the friction, which by again by default is ramped up a little bit because the standard cinema friction for some reason seems to be set to ice. So that just does that for you so you don't have to worry about it and it gives you the controls nicely there. So just to, as an example, if I just turn on, so turn on, create a sphere um, and maybe put that into a cloner. Uh, make that cloner a grid array, uh, shrink those sphere down a little bit like that. And let's just move those back here. Uh, turn on the rigid body tag for those and we'll turn on a rigid body tag for our car, which we just need to set to collision compound shape. And then if I just hit play, you can see that it just works. You, I haven't got to do anything to the floor or anything like that. Let's give us a few more frames to play with here. So that all just works and you know if you for whatever reason if you didn't want to say the back wall to be affected then now they're not so they just fall like that and then bang now they are so on and so forth okay so finally down here you've got illumination this basically gives you a super super bright illuminated floor um, and you can choose the color so that's if you want something crazily crazily clean um, and then you could maybe use it with global illumination to actually make it so the floor is is, is illuminated but it's just an option uh, so finally next is lighting uh, in here we have a lighting switch for each light um, so you can turn any of them on or off it's quite handy if you want to set set up lights individually you switch them all off and then add them and bring them in one at a time it helps you light the scene nicely. Uh, there's also a distance light. So if you've got something that's maybe off in the distance here, if it's not being illuminated, you can turn on the distance light and then that will illuminate it. And then you can choose your brightness and whether it has a shadow or not, because you might not want it to ha always have a shadow because uh, it obviously can slow down render. If it's far away, you might be able to see it, might be fine. Uh, we have the option to rotate all of the lighting like so, uh, and we can raise and lower it. Also, shadow quality is on this slider here. By default, it's quite low, um, even though, as you saw earlier, it still looks okay. But perhaps, you know, you set everything up, do your test renders, and then when you're done, you ramp that up a bit and do your final render. You can also hide the lighting reflections. So basically, if you've got an item in there that is very reflective and these lights are showing up in it and you don't want them to, you can switch that off there. And also, you can hide them in the editor if they're getting in your way. Uh, next, you have the global reflection settings, and basically with Infidio and Infidio Pro, you get 30 now studios. I added some new ones in for 1.4, um, and you can um, just choose like any of these. Some, like these are new ones with cloths kind of thing on them, so you can just put those on there. And now, basically, anything in the scene uh, that's reflected will reflect this image. Uh, you can control all of its settings and everything, but I'll just, uh, if I just create a sphere and maybe uh, make a, uh, a reflective texture to go on there and put that there, something like that, you'll see that the uh, that's kind of reflecting everything there. Um, and, you know, maybe something a bit different. So if we make it so it's kind of dark studio, And then go into reflection image and maybe choose say this one this can look pretty cool for a car or something you know uh, i need to turn off my illuminated floor there we go and then what you end up with is yes yeah, so you've got this kind of glowing from the red going on and this this strips so it's kind of all there ready for you uh, and set up and that's, that's looking pretty cool um, uh, do, 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 do. In the lighting, I should actually cover this, uh, you've got settings for each individual light. I'll just get rid of that sphere. So you can uh, adjust, say, the hair light, you can change its color, the brightness, and you can raise and lower it, change its width and its height. Um, for the key light, you can go and change the color, so maybe give it a bit of a yellow tint. Um, change all of its settings, circular, that sort of thing, move it in and out, move it around, put it wherever you need to put it. 
Uh, and then you've got your fill light, so perhaps we can maybe give that one a bit of a blue tint. Uh, again, we can move that around. You've got shadow darkness option. Move it to whereabouts you want it. So I can maybe move that one in a bit so it's affecting it a little bit more. And then just like that, we kind of change the look of the scene. Uh, there, there you go. So that is it. Um, one other f feature that I did add uh, fixes an issue with transparency. So the idea of this is basically for if you are having any issues displaying um, transparent objects. So if I just turn this one off for a moment uh, and we'll set the studio back to uh, white. Uh, something like that. It's a lot easier to see on a white studio. Uh, and we create, I don't know, say a cube, and create a new texture, make it transparent and reflective, uh, transparency just off slightly, a little bit of refraction, and we place that onto our cube. Now, what you will see is it's not acting as it should because we've kind of got this kind of weird, weird area. So basically if you're ever having that sort of trouble, you just go into here, uh, go to global reflection and turn on show background through transparency. And then you'll get this nice clean looking color all the way through. So that's just fixes that if you have any trouble. So that is basically it with InVideo Pro. Um, I hope uh, if you've already got it, I hope you enjoyed using it. Uh, if you haven't, perhaps you'll treat yourself to it and uh, I wish you all the best with it. Okay, thank you very much and I'll see you again soon.